Welcome, welcome back to the Speak Pact show. So glad you are here. And I know that you are going to be glad that you're here as well, because I have a fabulous, intelligent, incredible guest today who is going to bring in unusual insights in ways that is going to push your your speaking career to the next level with strategies you may not have even considered before. So before I go on and, and dump any of the beans, welcome, welcome, Ambassador Terry Earthwind Nichols. Thank you very much, Antoinette. I'm very glad to be here. Well, I wanted just to, to share a little bit about you, and then we'll um, dive into some really interesting t- topics. I, I already can tell that we're, we're not going to be able to get as deeply as I want to into each one, but let's touch on them and then, um, and then see where, where the journey takes us. So of course you are probably most well known for, um, I think you've written seven books or more. Ten, but who's counting? (laughs) Quite a few amazing books. Um, (laughs) You are a former UN ambassador, peace ambassador, which thank you for your service. Um, And you're the father of repetitive behavior, cellular regression, Uh, R, B, C, R. You're a visionary strategist, internationally known thought leader for people who are looking for achievement-based versus goals-based plans for their businesses, their corporations, and probably even their lives. Um, And so you're really here to shake up our approach to business, marketing, and I would even venture to say the way that we arrange our priorities in in our own worlds. So let's start with that big word. You're the father of repetitive, behavior, cellular regression. What is that? Well, it's a five and a half hour story. We'll cut it down to a I figured. (laughs) It is a nonlinear question and answer sequence that takes my clients or the client, we have practitioners all over the world, takes the client uh, through uh, the description of three memories uh in such a way that they use their five senses and not the memories or the story of a uh, excuse me the emotions and and the story of a memory this takes them out of emotions and if you're out of emotions you're also out of ego the only thing that's left is presence perfect presence out of emotion and when we get through with those three memories They find themselves back in early childhood in a a memory that is uh, amnesic in its makeup, and it controls the repetitive behaviors that they suffer from in adulthood. PTSD, a whole host of self-sabotage, a whole host of uh, repetitive behaviors we have uh, uh, helped neutralize with our, our clients. So that's the short response. Fascinating. Boy, I, I would really love to dive more into that just a little bit. So taking us out of ego and into perfect presence so that why? Like, why is that important for us as human beings? And then especially for a speaker who is trying to get their own message out there to the world. Well, I, I, I say often almost every, well, I think it's every speech that I presentation I get. Presence is the point where manifestation becomes action. Mm -hmm. In other words, you take care, you take away the anxiety of the past and the fear of the future, and you're only left with the present. The present has no emotions. Whatever you're thinking about, whatever you're looking for starts to come to light, make manifest. Okay, that is the key to standing in front of five to five thousand people because it's no different. Okay, you're still speaking to people, even if I'm speaking to well, once uh, in COVID during lockdown, I made a presentation to 1,124 people right here uh, on camera. I knew they were out there and I acknowledged them as real people. 
And when you do that, you start to have a conversation with your audience. And the better you know your audience ahead of time, uh, like, for instance, if I'm uh, brought to a, a conference or a summit or anything, I arrive the day before and I leave the day after so that I can be there in full support of my hosts, as well as communicate with a lot of different people that are there and how they're dealing with life according to what I'm about to speak to them about so that Again, when I'm uh, giving my presentation or my speech, I'm also talking to those people that I talked to before. They're real people. And that gives reality to what you're doing. And, and again, it takes the anxiety of things that may have happened to me in speeches before and the fear of messing up again. And I'm just right there in the middle in presence. And that helps a lot. Okay. So we're going from info dump to connection, right? Conversation mm -hmm. connection. So you and I could go out to lunch and you can just dump your brilliance on me. And I will never maybe feel that you heard me, understood me, really even cared about me. You were just dumping all of this curated knowledge on me versus the experiences that I've had with you where you, you are genuinely interested in me and the information that you share is more of a conversation and a connection and relevant to me because you've gotten to know me a little bit. So for a speaker to be able to master that skill when they're up in front of, like you said, five people or 5,000 people, it, that, it doesn't matter because you're connecting. You're not just, it's not your ego running the show. It's um, a deeper layer of being able to convey a concept in a way that can be received. Am I translating that anywhere near? <laughs> You're on point. You're on point, Antoinette. I absolutely love that. So it's I'm I know it's a whole process of yours, which is just, I love that you're the father of this and that it, it's so brilliantly, I've, I've had the pleasure of um, diving in to what you do a little bit deeper. But is this a skill any speaker can learn, the RBCR, right, to be able to connect with an audience, maybe even read an audience um, versus being so self-focused and, and nervous about whether they're going to get every word out just right? Is it, is it, does it come naturally or is it a learned skill or maybe a com combination of both? Well, RBCR is, uh, helps people separate from a speech. Uh, it, it is a one-on-one -on -one online uh, question and answer sequence. Um, mm -hmm. As far as connecting with people, um, you know, you make friends with people at the event and, and you make a connection. It's about re relationship marketing, which is uh, some buzzwords going on out there today and very relevant because you create a re relationship with a friend, you sell customers. OK, mm. and there's a big difference. A customer may come back the next time they need your widget, but a friend will stop by and say hi and bring their friends because they want you to uh, give the widgets or sell the widgets to their friends as well. Relationship marketing is key to the future of marketing. So you're a, you're you're a master at connecting, even in a room of of a very large audience. Mm -hmm. Can you share some tips on how you do that? How do you feel like, how do you convey your messaging so that a person sitting in the audience feels like you're speaking directly to them? Well, if you were to ask my college professor in speech class, he would tell you I would never be able to speak in front of anybody. Wow. The main reason is uh, he held me to task on reading uh my speeches i couldn't add lib okay and that's not the way to do it okay even with the teleprompter you still got to do some ad living but rather not but and when you have connected with some people and you can use your conversations with them as examples as you're going through your speech or presentation uh you put validity um 
and and you included them. They feel like they're there with you as part of this. And as important, it doesn't matter if I'm talking to 5,000 people in the room, or as I mentioned earlier, doing a presentation to five uh, chief executives in a, in a boardroom. It makes no difference. Um, the thing to key in on is you're talking to people. You're not talking to a room full of, of energy that's just going to distra distract you. Um, and, and it's very important to look at people and, and uh, not as a group of people, but zero in on the faces of people in the audience, not the same faces. Um, and get a little reaction on how they're doing with what you're saying, okay? And that would be little things like, and I teach it in my book, Profiling for Profit, What Cross Times Don't Tell You, is the little things that they do with their head, for instance, it indicates whether they uh, understand what you're talking about at that moment or not. And as a temperature check, I like to use the simple phrase or question, does that make sense? When you ask people, does that make sense? They will respond to you out loud. They won't just shake their head, okay? 97% of them will say, yes, that does make sense. I'm still not gonna buy from you, but that does make sense. Uh, but more importantly, okay, that 97% is now patterning themselves to say yes to you out loud. Okay, we're taught from very early on in life, uh, never buy on the first ask, okay? You just don't do that, okay? And after a while, we don't give ourselves permission to acknowledge the people, the person or persons that we're talking to. So many times during a presentation or a speech, I'll ask the crowd um, or the audience, uh, does that make sense? And people shake their heads and stuff. I said, I can't hear you. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and they also hear the crowd's energy in a positive response. So it takes the anxiety they may be feeling sitting in, in the audience ready to buy from me, uh, whatever, if it's RBCR or uh, one of my books. It's more important that they use and be present with their five senses as I'm giving my presentation because somewhere in my presentation or speech, I have them acknowledge all five of their senses, okay? The senses, when you uh, stop and think about what you're seeing or what you're tasting or what you're hearing or what you're touching, um, you disconnect from the anxiety uh, of the moment, mm -hmm. okay? By the end of my uh, presentations, I see very few people looking down at their, their iPhones. Very few. They're looking at me because I've made a personal connection to them, okay? There is the difference from my experience with other speakers and present presenters and myself. It's very important to connect with the audience, but as, as important, they connect with you. Brilliant, okay, so your book, Profiling for Profit, What Cross arms don't tell you mm -hmm. is something that our audience can get, right? It's, I, I think this is so critically important as a speaker to think more about the audience than they're thinking about themselves and to connect with the audience versus just giving them a bunch of information, right? And, and being able to profile that audience before you get on stage and then add, and zero, zeroing in as you're on stage, it can feel like, oh, wow, I'm just trying to learn my, <laughs> learn my lines, right? I'm just trying to, it feels next level, mm -hmm. but it, to me, it's foundational. If you don't get your lines all correctly right, that doesn't matter. If you're not following your bullet points exactly right, that doesn't matter as much as connecting to each person that you're speaking to. And you do that by zeroing in on certain faces is what I was hearing you say. So incredibly brilliant and to disconnect from your own anxiety, because when we're anxious, we're basically self-focused, right? We're so focused on ourselves that 
switching that focus over to the audience helps alleviate some of that anxiety. This is what I'm hearing you say. Am I on point? Is there anything you want to correct me on there? No, no, no. Um, that's that's fabulous. You're right on point. So what you're you've you've got these layers of strategies that can be a whole kingdom in itself. How what are some of the keynotes and presentations that are most asked for of you uh, in your speaking engagements? Well, there's there's two that um, correlate with my best selling books, and that is Consortium Business Model for the 21st Century and the Profiling for Profit, What Cross Times Don't Tell You. They've both been uh, published in five, uh, five com- and, and sold in, in five countries other than uh, U.S. and Canada. OK, uh, so one uh, speech is about the RBCR um, uh, people want to know about. And, and as a matter of fact, um, recently I spoke to a summit in Barcelona, Spain uh, about uh, repetitive behavior and its use in science today. OK, it's a relative uh, uh, subject that is um, I'm going to speak on that four more times this year. OK. Uh, so it's it's a desired uh, presentation. The other the other two really is consortium the business model. What I've taken is a normal way of thinking about business timelines, uh, goals, all those kinds of things. They create the opportunity to miss them. We miss a lot more timelines and goals than we ever make. So what if we take that anxiety out of the the equation and remove the timelines and goals, set a vision in the future for everyone in the company to achieve, achieve, not get to, not, not, you get to achieve it. And you set a roadway with some stops along the way that can actually achieve that vision. So in other words, the vision isn't something in a mission and vision statement uh, in your business plan. It exists. It's there on the horizon where you're headed. And when you get there, everybody achieves and they celebrate. Well, ladies and gentlemen, take two seconds to think about when you the last time you achieved something. How did you feel? How would you like to re- reproduce that in a room full of people who are doing the same thing? All of you. All of you feed off of each other's energy. But the most important thing is once you get to your vision, now what? You get to do it again. And, and the, the ability to create that new vision is really quite fast because everybody knows what's going on. And their, their, buy, their buy-in is 100%. You know, right down, I like to use banks, right down to the bank teller taking money in the window, okay? Um, everybody believes in it, and so does the front office. The very top of the company believes in the in the vision, and they back each other. It's very exciting. Mm-hmm. Now, the other thing that I, I speak on often is the uh, profiling for profit. It teaches people in real time how to read the person or persons in the room. Are they understanding you? Do they trust you? Is there, there, do you have the right kind of confidence because you're reading trust in the room? How to do that and how to change your presentation to get them back on track or use the famous question and when to use the famous question. Does that make sense? So does that make sense, Antoinette? There is so much there. Yes, love it. And I, to me, it sounds like it's the difference between giving a great presentation and making a rock solid connection, right? Because any any particular talk really should just be the first step in a whole journey with you, versus the end all be all. And mm-hmm. so you could the end all be all, just kind of the one off talk would be doing a great presentation. People clap. Oh, wasn't Ambassador Terry great? Really liked him. Versus real transformation happening because you, Ambassador, has had connected with me. I felt real transformation happening through the way that you connected with me, the way you delivered your information, and it lasts with me to the point where I want to seek you out 
afterwards. That should be every speaker's goal, not to just have a one-off, but to begin a whole journey. And that can only happen through connecting. So I see that with the profiling aspect that, um, in, in, that incredible system that you've come up with. How did you go from a pro- professor telling you that you to, to don't even think about speaking, basically, to developing this system and and becoming a master at it, and now obviously a sought after speaker? Well, it's been about uh, forty five years, so I've had a lot of experience at it. I'm, I'm in my early seventies right now. Um, the, the, the key is I've always enjoyed watching people. I'm a people watcher. My first uh, 20 years as an adult uh, was in the United States Navy traveling uh, three, three, no, two thirds of the world. And uh, whenever uh, we were going to ports, I'd go and, and sit down at a sidewalk cafe and get my cappuccino and watch people. It was so, mm. so interesting how people interact with each other in both a positive and exciting way and a not so exciting way. And what changed with their the way they moved and those types of things when uh, they mood shift, okay? And I took that to heart. And when I retired from the Navy at the ripe old age of 38 years old, I love saying that, <laughs> uh, I went out into the sales world and I used those skills to, to sell people. Uh, the crossed arms uh, example that I use in, in the book is, is very, very good. And I love it. I was selling custom clothes. I'm a clothes horse. I was selling, uh, custom clothes, uh, to a gentleman and he's standing in front of me like this, right? To the average person, that means I'm not buying what you say and I'm not buying what you're selling. Okay. Only I knew that he was ready to buy. And you're probably asking yourself, what? His le- head was to the left, okay? This is a learned response. Your parents get mad at you or your teacher gets mad at you. They do this, okay? Cross your arms, yeah. So that's a learned response. It is not necessarily a no. However, we get patterned that way that that's the way it is. But his head was down and to the left. Now, what does that mean? That means if you ever pick up a baby, where does it go? Right here over your heart. And what do you do with your head? You bring it down and to the left, okay? That's love, trust, nurture. I understand what you're saying and I'm ready to buy. So right in the middle of this guy going like this, I'm not even finished with my presentation. I say, so how do you wanna pay for this? And he says, oh, I don't know, you take Visa? And I said, yeah, let's sit, let's sit down and look at some cloth and uh, I'll make you a suit. He says, okay. A couple of minutes later, he sits back and he says, wait a minute. And I says, there a question? And he says, yeah, I sell millions of dollars worth of our products all over the United States every month. I'm standing in front of you saying no buy and no way. And you closed me. How did you do that? And so I told him and he thought about it for a second. He goes, well, I'll be. OK, so where were we? And he was in. OK. Uh, and I did it in such a way he had trust for me. Okay. He was down like this. There was trust there. And uh, the book teaches you a lot of how to do that, how to enter a room so that you're not scared when you enter the room. Okay. Uh, little things like go, always go to the restroom before you walk into an event. Is there any food in your mouth? All, all those little things count. You know, if you spend an hour, hour and a half in an event, Then you have to go to the restroom. You go in the restroom and you notice you've had food in your teeth the entire time. You're you're devastated. Okay. However, you take care of all those things that at uh, at the beginning, you look in the mirror and you go, I'm ready. And you smile. Now your whole outlook on life, your persona, everything has shifted from I don't know if I want to do this to, you know, I think I'm going to be okay. So that when you step in the door, you have energetically announced that you're here and you're okay. And people in the room feel that even if they don't consciously acknowledge it. Those are all the different things that I go over in that book. And so doing a presentation on profiling for profit is a riot. I have the people just having some fun stuff. (laughs) 
So we can read the book. Is there a way, which is incredible. I can't wait to dig in. Is there a way to practice it with you or go a next level with you? Because it, I, I, some of us have been told the very same thing, maybe from a professor or from our from ourselves. That, oh gosh, don't even try to get on a stage. Doesn't matter what what strategies and impact that you have that are important for the world to hear. You're just not good on the stage, right? Or you're not you're not going to ever really be a great speaker. But it seems to me that if I can just shift my focus from my pride and my ego and more on to really understanding the audience through these tactics, these strategies through our, that you've created through RBCR and others, if I, if I can do that, know I can walk into a room with full confidence, know I can get onto a stage without feeling high anxiety so that I can really get those strategies out to the people who are laying awake at night, praying for them right there. They're at the place because they need the information that I have. And I'm, I'm the one holding it back. What a crying shame because of my own hiccups. Right. Mm -hmm. But these strategies that we can be found through your book, um, are really game changer and, and life changing, Mm -hmm. not just for you, but for all of those people who would otherwise not be able to either get your message in the fullness because you haven't connected with them on that deeper level or maybe not at all because you're just not going to step onto that stage. Some of us can read the book and we're good to go. Some of us are like, I need to link arms with you. Is, is there, do you have something like that out there or more videos? What do you, what do you have on that le- level? <laughs> I have about 400 videos on my YouTube channel. Oh, um, wow. and, you know, the big thing is, um, don't go out and uh, ask to be a speaker on a stage of 50 or 100 people and you've never done it before. Not a good idea. However, you probably have a, a small group of people that um, you have coffee with on Saturday morning or um, church groups or anything like that where everybody there know, likes, and trust you and you know, like, and trust them. Okay? And uh, try out... Uh, standing up and you know i'm thinking about doing some speaking i want to practice you guys okay with that okay well of course they are and they're going to be nurturing and supportive okay so you start with them you make the mistakes with these little crowds of people that will put their arms around you and say it's all right you know it's okay you're going to get better if you were to go to my youtube channel and look at some of the first videos that i made they're terrible but I still have them out there because I want people to see it's okay to make mistakes. All right. You're going to make them. So, you know, just know that that's going to happen. You know, I've, I've made a lot of lives and um, uh, I've made mistakes and, and flubbed up uh, many times, even recently, because I'm not afraid to. And I just keep going. If there's something that that happened quite a bit, I'll probably bring something funny to it or I'll just let it go completely and keep going. So if people didn't quite notice it, they they won't refer to it. Um, But we get back to what I said at the very beginning. If they acknowledge you as a person, not this big rock star or something up there, and you acknowledge them as people, when those opportunities happen to where things don't quite go like expected, they, they may just chuckle it off. Okay, wow, he did that one good. All right, so what else you got? You know, it's not that, it's not that critical. But start small. You know, um, I've, I've coached people who are all set to give a presentation to a couple of hundred people and they've never spoken in front of anybody before. That's not real easy to do, particularly if that couple of hundred people knows, doesn't know you and you don't know them. Okay, that's very hard to do. So we, we go out and we stand on the box in public. Okay, or I have them stand on the box in the public and give a presentation about something that you feel deeply in your soul about. Because when it gets down to it, 
whatever you're giving your sales presentation on or you're speaking on the subject or whatever, believe it from here, okay, not from here. I tell people, make your decisions from your heart, use your soul for counsel, and your brain for storage, mm. not, not the reverse. Say that one more okay. time. Heart, use soul, your brain. heart for when you're making a decision, make your decisions with your heart, use your soul for counsel and your brain for storage. Mm. Okay. And you do all right. And you're going to make some mistakes, but you're going to do all right. And you're going to get better every single time you do it. Yes. And when you are delivering from your heart, people, people love authenticity and they're going to be way more open when you're all up in your head trying to deliver this thing perfectly. It can be, they can start feeling bad for you, right? If something doesn't go exactly right, because it's it's so forced. But when it's from your heart and your soul, it's more about the connection and people mm -hmm. are going to be way more willing to and able to receive the strategies and methods that you're putting across. Mm -hmm. So profile profiling for profits, that's more the tactical, right? Really mm -hmm. creating that skill for those pieces where you can connect better. And I love even just the, the idea of not having just eaten and then going out there. I know a lot of high level politicians who will not eat, even if it's an eating event, they don't eat, they mingle, that they'll eat later in private, but it's because how they come across, how they communicate, how they connect, is the order of business of the moment, right? It's it's not about them getting fed. So I thought that was really brilliant and so simple. Any one of us could do that. Um, when you move more to um, consort, I want to make sure I'm saying this right, cons your consortium model, mm -hmm. did I say that correctly? Right. Tell me a little bit more about that, that methodology. How does that fit in, especially with regards to a speaker. So I'm getting your RBCR down. I, I would think that would be the first book to go to, like the first videos on YouTube, the first book to go to, and then bring in consortium or is it, do I have that right? Well, um, depending on what you're looking for, I send them in different directions. Uh, like I have all my books on Amazon. So I have uh, on my LinkedIn tree, if you were to go to um, my LinkedIn uh, profile to Ambassador Terry Earthwind Nichols, uh, under the in the contact button is my link tree link to all my websites and all my social media. And in there is my author page. So you can go and learn a little bit about uh, what all of my books are about and make a decision on on what is uh, relevant to you and what you would like to talk about, you know, um, Consortium business model is a new business way, new way of people centric. Okay. It's all about the people. I often uh, talk about Sir Richard Branson, the creator of Virgin, brilliant man. You know what makes him different from everybody else? One simple thing. Okay. Take care of your employees. They'll take care of your customers. Mm. Okay during the lockdown and uh, the subsequent issues with uh, the great uh, resignation and all of that, Virgin had no problems. Nobody went anywhere in Virgin. They're happy people, okay? When uh, something uh, opens up, like one of the, his Virgin hotels or his new steamship or anything like that, he's on the opener. He's there for the weekend opener and he's talking to all of his staff first. He talks and relates and, and really connects with all of the staff first before the doors open, okay? Because when the doors open, the staff, him included, focus on the customer, okay? And they focus on the customer from here, not here, okay? He teaches that. And so um, the same thing is true with consortium. Consortium is a people-centric business model where achievement and group and centric achievement repeated will, will realize the, the vision of the company. And uh, I spell it out. You know, I write uh, short books, ladies and gentlemen, 
we call them airplane books. You can read them in about an hour to an hour and 20 minutes. So on a flight from New York to uh, Atlanta, you can read one of my books and then you get off and you contact your salespeople and say, buy these books for all the VPs and above, right? Love because it. they're very valid. And then they reach out to me. Can you kind of give us a presentation on this or that? And, and we start a conversation and that's really uh, how that goes. All right. It's connecting with people. Consortium is the way to do business in the future. You know, it's all mm -hmm. about the people. The stakeholders and the shareholders are going to be happy because you're constantly exceeding expectations of, of the share. OK, so all of that um, takes care of itself. The only people I tell uh, uh, my corporations love this. The only people that need to worry about timelines is the tax people. They can't miss those. But other than that, everything's fine. And even the t even the accounting and the tax people uh, finish well ahead of time timelines because they're having a good time. If they come in, they're having a bad day because of something's happening at home. They get in with all of that positive family type energy and the bad day goes away. It, mm -hmm. They're in it. OK, everything shifts. Whereas the opposite, if everybody's under the gun, that's when ethics start to come to play and uh, all of those things that are bad business models that have been in place for forever. Your models are brilliant, even down to the approach you took with your books, airplane books, right? You can get it, you can read it within an hour and they're powerful. You feel like you've written, you've, you feel like you've read a novel. Hmm? with all of the tra transformative insights that you receive through there. And I think it was Mark Twain, I hope I'm quoting this right, uh, who said, if I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. And you've really taken that to the next level, where as a, as a corporate leader, as a CEO, um, as a speaker really wanting to move my career, as a and this audience that you're speaking to today, they're all high level achievers. So time is an issue. Right. They want to they want to get what they need and start implementing those and move on. They don't always have time for a full novel or even, you know, a year long coaching program, whatever it might be. They really just want the thing so that they can move their impact, their revenue, the number of speaking engagements, whatever it might be to that next level, their connection with the audiences. So just that is a beautiful model to model, right? In that when you're communicating with your audience, whether it's through writing a book or getting across a, a, a concept from a stage, make it where there's a lot of power in the sh and, and clarity in the shortest amount of space possible. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think that packs a really powerful punch. I'm not exactly sure how you came up with that, but I love it. Um, and well, if you were to look at the, the banner behind my profile photo on LinkedIn, you'll see that in 2022, I was one of the top 20 uh, marketing influencers to follow in 2022. Uh, I'm a marketer. I come up with stuff all the time. And uh, last year, I was number 97 of the top 200 voices in leadership. Not to mention, I am one of the top uh, thought leaders and business strategy in the world. So uh, that didn't come easy and it didn't come overnight. It came from me liking what I do, watching people drinking uh, while I'm drinking cappuccino to where I am today is 40 years, but it's been a great journey. And it also comes from you implementing your own models and strategies and the, they worked. Right. Mm -hmm. So the, I don't necessarily want to go to a doctor who's obese and looks like he's not going to see tomorrow. Right. I want to go to a doctor who looks like the picture of health. And when I take advice from him, I can model that I, ca I can feel confident in the information that he's giving me because he he lives it himself. And and that's mm -hmm. who you are. If I, if, if I want to get good at connecting with and reading and connecting with my audience, if I want to get good at serving at a higher level, my teams and my clients, then go to the person who's already been doing it, 
right? And so as we start winding down, um, speak to me a little bit about mental stamina and well-being. I know that's just kind of this huge topic right now, and you speak to it on a, on a pretty large scale. So I know that's a whole talk in itself, but I didn't want to wrap up today without at least touching on it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a rear admiral who's uh, um, the president of uh, University of Texas right now. He gave a commencement speech uh, to the Naval Academy some years ago, and it was brilliant. Start the day by making your bed. Now, that seems kind of weird, but here's the here's the thing. When you get up and you make your bed, you've accomplished something in your day before you've done anything, before the interruptions of the world come to you. You have done something positive for yourself. And that gets you connected to yourself. Start the day by making your bed. Wow. You know, well, in the military, you have to make your bed (laughs) or you're in trouble. But it's it's also a win win for you. And it gives you some confidence that, you know, no matter what the day is going to happen, you you've started doing something for yourself, because uh, if you think of yourself first, that's not being selfish, that's being protective. Is this good for me? Is this part of who I am? And if it's not, be honest with yourself and say no to the person. You know, be no. Now, there's times when you can't say no because of economics or uh, you got a family to feed or things like that. You make a decision. But while you're doing the work that you do not enjoy, figure out the stuff that you do enjoy and start looking for a job there. Okay? Because you're going to be a better employee, you're going to be a happier employee. Now, for you bosses out there, people who uh, achieve on a regular basis are healthier. Their families have a better uh, have it better at home. Their mental health is is very strong, and they take little or no sick days. So uh, insurance liabilities uh, come down instead of continue to grow. Uh, time off, accidents and stuff like that. But most important in these days since COVID, people don't leave their jobs where they're happy. They don't leave Mm -hmm. the jobs. So you're not looking for people all the time because they're happy doing what they're doing. And they are very happy for the new person to come into their, their division or whatever because they can't wait to help them along so that they're happy too. Okay? It is significant. Um, the consortium model. People don't leave their jobs where they are happy, right? And there's mm-hmm. a there's a workforce crisis right now. If we could just get that piece, uh, if these major corporations just can just get that piece, there would be a, a much less crisis in the workforce, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Far Brilliant. and more, was, no, far and wide, ahead. more and more executives too don't necessarily leave their company and their position for more money in a different place. It's more than that now. They want to be happy there. The money's good. Uh, increase in money, that's always b- wonderful. But if, if I know I am not going to be happy there, I won't even consider it. It's, it's a non-item. Mm-hmm. And more and more people are going, ah, I'm not doing it. I may not be totally um, happy here, but I won't be happy there, even mm-hmm. if I make more money. So that's significant. Ah. Okay, there was so much to unwrap here. It was just a transformation-filled talk. Thank you, Ambassador, for bringing us these insights. And they're just the tip of the iceberg. So to that end, I do have one more question I want to ask you. But to that end, tell us how we can work with you on a deeper level, how we can reach you. What is your, you mentioned 400 videos on your YouTube channel. Is that Ambassador Terry Nichols or how do we find you? Well, my name, Ambassador Terry Earthwind Nichols, is unique. If you were to Google that, you'd find one in the world. If you Google Terry Nichols, you'll find 17,000 of us in the United States alone. So uh, Earthwind, I'm Native American. That's my tribal name, Earthwind. So I tell people, if you can't remember to go to LinkedIn or whatever, uh, you can just Google Terry Earthwind Nichols and you find 
all that you want, all of my books, my companies, everything. Okay, so uh, that's the easiest way to do it. Um, if you want to talk to me, uh, Thinkers360 has my speaker pro profile and LinkedIn has uh, my profile information as well. Click on the contact information and you'll get my Linktree link. That's where I send people. And it shows a list and, and hot links to my speaker page or my author page uh, at uh, Amazon and all of that. And if you want, you're right there in my profile. Reach out to me and we can start a dialogue. Okay, so I'll make sure to add your linked your 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 link tree links um, or the link to your link tree links in the show notes because I know that there's going to be plenty of people that are going to want this was just such a, a taste. They're going to want that next level from you. <clears throat> and then Googling Ambassador Terry Earthwind Nichols, they're going to find you everywhere. Right. I think that's that's I've Googled you and you are basically fill up the first three pages. So um, if not more. So that's um, you're definitely not hard to find. And you're very responsive. So thank you for the work that you've put out to the world and definitely keep it up um, in your 70 years young. You know, whatever. I think you said you're oh, you're in your 70s and yet you just are the picture of what we should all aspire to in that that only means you just have even more cura curated knowledge, right? To bring out to the world and to really continue to make that impact um, and revenue uh, as, as a person who has earned their dues and bring so much to the table for all, for, for all, right? And thank you for just so actively day day by day i know even just getting an appointment with you is very difficult because you are so out there and so active and traveling and and doing all the things and really imparting not keeping to your chest not not hoarding all of that beautiful curated knowledge that you've developed over these decades of your career so thank you for imparting that to everyone so i want to leave everyone with one last answer from you one last tidbit from you and that is for those who are maybe emerging speakers you're seasoned in your world of thought leadership but for those who are maybe just just emerging they're maybe not household names quite yet what is your challenge for them. This show is Speak Packed, and we love to leave everyone with a pact between you and the audience on taking their voices to the next level. Speak regularly. If you're introverted, figure out something that you absolutely love and talk about it with somebody or a, a group of people. Start with something that, that comes from your heart and will give you the confidence that that is good to have or you really need uh, before you start the, the trail. Now, when I started my company, uh, Evolutionary Healer LLC, back in 2012, uh, my wife and business partner, we were a mom and pop team. Now we're global. OK, and it didn't come overnight. It's a lot of hard work. The key to it has been, uh, OK, let's go again, you know. In life, you either learn or you learn, okay? So I recommend, and it's because I'm a mentor, I've had mentors and coaches, okay? And I have both right now for different reasons. A mentor helps me on my life's journey, uh, not so much like a life coach, but in a different regard. And a coach depend, changes all the time if, if I have a very complicated speech or something like that. I will hire a speech coach to help me get through that, to put it together, to deliver it like I want it to be delivered. Because uh, it's always nice to have a teacher handy. You know, um, you know, uh, people who can do, people who can't teach, but they're just as smart. Okay, they have the knowledge and the experience. Uh, if if any of you are starting out on a business, you get a coach first, who can help you set up and do all of this uh, beginning things 
So you don't make as many errors, but you're still going to make them. Uh, uh, and you have somebody that, that can give you the ABCs about everything that you're thinking about doing or getting ready to do. Uh, so I recommend that. Those are the biggies. Okay, so do it often. Mm -hmm. Study your craft, hone your craft, and bring in reinforcements. Because mm -hmm. a new level, new you, right? You're always going to need those new those reinforcements at whatever level you're at. Um, I think a good a, a, the top thought leaders, the top influencers, know the importance of having mentors along the way. That they never arrive. Once you've arrived, then ego and I don't know, I think you kind of stop being effective. It's that person who's always curious, who's always honing, and who's always recognizes that there's somebody else that can contribute to them at a high, to bring them to that next level, to the higher level. So brilliant. And do it often, do it consistently. Mm -hmm. yes. No one offs. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ambassador Terry. This has been transformative. And I just so appreciate your time. Thank you for coming. Thank you, uh, Antoinette. This has been a lot of fun. All right. Well, we'll talk again soon. Ciao, ciao for now. Okay. Bye-bye.